morning, everyone. How's everyone doing? <laughs> Trying to make my uh, my lovely guests here feel a little bit more comfortable. So if we can hear from you, you all doing well this morning? <laughs> excellent, excellent. Um, so leveling up, eh? That's what you fellas want to do. Level up. Well, we've got an amazing panel here for you today, uh, and we're going to be talking about the Artist Toolkit. Uh, and I'm going to zip down the line here and introduce um, this wonderful panel to you. Uh, to my left, first, is uh, the wonderful Lorraine Barry, good friend of mine. Uh, and she's with the uh, Lorraine Barry Management. Uh, next to her, or one seat over, uh, we've got uh, Zilka Hartung uh, from New Zealand Musician. How did, I, how did I do with that? Excellent. It was really excellent. Okay, cool. Uh, then we've got uh, Thea, uh, who's, uh, who's an artist, and uh, thank you very much for your karakia this morning. And she's just released an album, Te Kahu Orangi. Was that right? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so she released that last week, a full Te Reo album. Check that out. And, uh, and with her is, uh, is Paula Yeoman from uh, Nick Knack Media. Morena, everyone. Morena. Okay, so the toolkit. I thought maybe we'd start down the end there, Paula, with you, and uh, maybe you could give us uh, a bit of a framework to work towards in terms of what is in the in the in, its, in an artist toolkit. Yeah, I think I'll, I'll start by saying I always think what I've always thought: what are tools and what are assets? When people say these words, because I'm like I've been doing this for years, and I still go tools. I don't even know what that means, but I mean, I guess I, I think what I think it means is. Um, it's the things that we need at our fingertips whenever we're, you know, you're going to promote your music, whenever you're going to pitch yourself to um, whoever, whoever it may be, a promoter, a, a festival booker, um, a record label, um, the media. So I think, you know, that's how we often do throw those words around, tools, assets. That's essentially what they mean. The, the key components of what you need to promote yourself as an artist, as a band. Um, so... There are a lot of tools that you can have, but I think the, the things, the, the core components of a really good toolkit um, is firstly a good bio. And um, I know we probably will speak a bit more in depth about bios, so I won't go into great detail. But um, from my point of view, I mean, I've been a journalist, I've been, I'm a music manager, and I also have um, uh, a PR company. So I've kind of, I kind of come at it from all of those angles. Having been a journalist, I've seen many bios come across my desk. Now having been someone who um, writes them for my own artist and also someone who um, helps other artists to write them, um, yeah, you get, there's a lot of different types of ways to do a bio, good and bad. Um, but in my opinion, um, it needs to be clear, succinct and just simple. It just really needs to capture who you are as an artist. Um, and that can be hard when you're starting out because, you know, you don't have a lot of fancy stats and a lot of, um, I don't know, re review, wonderful reviews to fall back on and stuff like that. So it can be tricky. But, yeah, we can come on to that maybe a bit later. But um, a bio, a really clear, succinct bio, um, a collection, a selection of photos that capture who you are as well. Um, and, again, I think, you know, um, we've, we can... And, and, I, and I know Zilka will probably speak a bit more about this too, because having, you know, when you, you kind of need, to, yeah, you get, you, you do get some photos that you're like, well, these are just not going to look any good in print, or these are not going to look any good online, and what shape is this? So <laughs> I'll leave that to probably Zilka to talk about. But those are the things you need to be mindful of. You know, what what do your, a selection as in different looks maybe, uh, different shapes maybe, uh, yeah. But I think for me personally, I do think it needs to capture who you are. Um, I'm the kind of person that visually um, everything I make decisions based on visuals. I make I, I make decisions based on what music I listen to by whether I like the cover, the artwork or not. Mm -hmm. So the same with photos. If I think, oh, that artist looks really interesting, so just be mindful of that. So good photos, good bio, um, and and your music. I mean, at the end of the day, that's what it's about, right? Um, I cannot tell you how much music I get sent in one week. It's almost impossible to keep track of um, and I get it in every which way you can possibly imagine. Um, my laptop is basically chocker, I'm a really bad um, admin, not good at admin, but um, my, my laptop is chocker with files of people's music, um, which is, you know, I, 
basically when people send me stuff to download, I have to download it in various forms. So um, I personally like to hear music stream, like on a streaming platform, whether it's SoundCloud or um, The Amazing Disco, which I can also tell you a bit more about later. But these are just really simple ways that you can open up, whether you have those platforms or not, you can hear the music. Um, I just want to click a, click a link and hear the music. So those three things alone are the very core uh, basic things I would expect one to have in a toolkit. Um, and, you know, you can, if you've got those three things, then you are doing very well. Um, and then there's a lot of little extra things you can add to. Um, one thing I would just add, um, a one-pager is really, really a cool thing to have. It is essentially a bio, but the cool thing about a one-pager is, and you will get asked this, I mean, I've been asked many times, can I have Thea's one-pager? And then I'm like, oh, shit, is it updated? So, you know, I'm like constantly updating it. But um, it is a, it is a one-page, it is... Um, it probably has, it'll have photos on it, it'll have um, It'll have hyperlinks so you can click on the music and hear it straight away. It'll have stats like, you know, your monthly, your Spotify streams, your chart success, all of those things nicely um, captured in one page. It is hard if you've got an artist that has like five pages worth of um, things to shout about, but that that's what makes it, you know, I guess the challenge is to try and, um, condense it into one page. So, um, yeah, I think those, for me, would be the key components of a good toolkit. Awesome. Do you guys get that? <laughs> I expect to see furious writing, so I'll be <laughs> watching. Um, thanks, Paula. And so um, I, I just wanted to quickly, I guess, this is not, not the uh, smoothest of segues, but um, I just wanted to check with you, Thea, um, and we were talking about it earlier, uh, I guess just around you're quite active on social media as an artist. We, we, I feel like when, when we engage with you in social media, we're getting your true self. And, um, and you know, there's this, there was, there's this um, I guess, this thing between uh, what you're putting out there in terms of stats and, and things like that and, and what your key points are. But I, what do you think about, as an artist, um, about how you put yourself forward and um, and as part of your toolkit, I guess social media is going to be part of that, right? And so, um, what do you do? What, what do you do around that as an artist um, to help uh, work with the with the stuff that Paul is putting out? Oh, um, okay. I guess. Um, oh well, ite te o tahi kiaora, ko te ato kui ngoa huri aho no roto mai wai kato tai nui, no te pua ha wai kato ko ngati sipa ko ngati amaru ngo ku hapu ko kuku tai ko kara kango ku fano kiaora. Um, uh, okay, I would say that yeah, social media. I I really love. Um, I love it because I have like like many other people during this time, mega high anxiety. And um, so I like socials because I'm able to just, you know, choose what I put up, choose what I kind of put out. Um, and I think the thing that's changed for me from when I first started off like, you know, four or five years ago, um, I... I don't know, I felt like I was obsessed with feeling like I needed to have everything really mega polished and like my captions like so um, well spoken that it's not even like how I speak. And then um, a lot of things happened, like I obviously uh, left a major label and that was remarkably incredible and have been independent for like two and a half years. And so kind of when that shift happened, obviously I had like more freedom just in general, like with my music, which kind of was more like experimental and everything like that. So in turn, I felt like my whole entire kind of wairua and ahuatanga on uh, socials also changed because I just, you know, felt like, oh, it's actually like, I don't really have to moderate myself in the way that I felt like I could. Like um, now I'm more, I don't know, I can just put up pictures that are really quirky or rough or like also really, really polished. And um, the way that I write and have kind of like always written, which is kind of quite text languagey, like all lowercase kind of cursive vibes um, mixed with the Del Māori um, is how I just choose to write and that just makes me feel so happy and like I'm just, you know, able to experiment and have fun with um, uh, socials. And then we were also talking if we're um, like I'm, I'm very passionate about my picks and um, kind of like P, I feel like uh, just, 
I don't know. I want to... I want to be able to show exactly what I feel um, uh, is like kind of my vibe, uh, and also visually describing the sonics of my waiata and things like that. So I kind of um, through both being with like you know in the early days a major label where there's a whole lot more of a budget and also an expectation for everything to be extremely like polished. I kind of have you know had the experiences of obviously having bigger put there and so therefore more um, shiny imagery but then also um, at the same time uh, you know really having a lot of tiranga tiratanga miki um, being an independent artist where some of the pictures like for example um, uh, following the many blessings that have came with this beautiful uh, record that I released Rolling Stone did a piece right and they used this picture that literally P took of me on all Wairaka, um, Mount Albert, um, looking like, you know, literally just dressed myself, did my own hair, did my own makeup. And it it doesn't look like it's professionally done. Like um, the, the shot's really beautiful, but it's not like super HD or anything. Like it's got a bit of a grain on it from a cell phone and stuff. But it's kind of just proof that I guess I just... I don't want anyone to feel like um, if you don't have the huge backing of some major or something that you can't make incredible imagery that resonates with people enough to, you know, be in huge publications. So I don't know. Yeah, I guess that's what I'm um, passionate about is just making sure that my visuals, whether they're super glossy with a budget or whether they're just, you know, me um, dressing myself, styling myself, doing my makeup, doing my hair, and then just, you know, Being whatever. You. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that's what I love. And then in turn, um, P pretty much takes kind of that content, if you like, and puts that in and yeah. That's yeah, fab. cool, cool, cool. I guess it's it'd be easy to kind of uh, uh, misinterpret that the idea that you have a toolkit is just is a whole bunch of things that you just statistically need to nail, um, and versus uh, understanding why that you're doing it. Why, Lorraine? And I think we were having a, a conversation about this earlier, and, and I know that you've got some thoughts about this around, uh, you know, the 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 motivation towards doing these types of things. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Um, I think we've had the list of what you need to do, but also the list of who it has to go to. And so I think you have tools in various different states. Um, I'm sorry if I refer to my own artists during this, but obviously it's my experience every day. It's what I'm committed to and passionate about and what I'm working on, as is Paula. Um, so I'm sorry. I'm sorry if I refer to to Dave Dobbin and Team Dynamite and Tom Scott and um, my latest um, Aidan Fine. But um, you know, when you've a, we've, when you've had a 40-year career, what new can Dave Dobbin say? And that has to be a challenge every day for us. So, you know, I have a file that has three pages of a biog, and I have a one paragraph that tries to capture who he is and what he's done. Or I have what I call a mid-biog that's a little bit longer. But everybody needs to have the things that go to the different people. It's not just you need a biog. You might need five biogs. Um, you might need to just be thinking of who am I talking to and how do I need to talk to them and what is the priority? So if you're trying to pitch for a support slot, um, a promoter really doesn't need to know all that other stuff that you've written. They need to know why is this act going to be the right person to open? Can they do it? What experience have they had? Um, and you're going to be pitching something different to every person. If you're going to radio, frankly, all radio cares about is Will people stay with this track? Will they stay on my station? Will they listen? And will they learn to love this audience? So the, you know, I've, I've done this or I've done this or I was in the school theatre company, it, it really is irrelevant. So just once you've come through your creative process, which is so you, I think you then need to step back when you're releasing things and think about... What do other people need? Put yourself in the shoes of whoever you're talking to. Think about what does Zilka need um, when I'm sending her something versus 
what does uh, national radio need? And that's across the board with photos, biogs, um, videos, little snippets. Um, you need to sell yourself in a different way and inform people in a different way as you go along. Well, uh, so developing those, uh, um, those different assets for depending on who you're pitching to. Mm. Um, and Zilka, as a consumer of, uh, you know, toolkits and biogs and, and photos, what are some of the common mistakes that you see coming across your desk? Um, oh, gosh, you know where to start. Um, what time is um, yeah, what time is it now? I think um, a, a big one is attaching large files that I didn't ask for to an email. So you go, hey, my new song is coming out. And it was only like last week, 14 megabyte WAV file attached directly to email and then asking me to playlist that on the Spotify playlist for you. And it's just like, huh, okay. I, wow, I don't even know what to say now. So I basically have an autoresponder saying, your file unfortunately landed in my trash because it was really huge and stuffs up my inbox. Um, but these are the ways of how you could do get files to me and you know um, still get them heard, to be heard. So large files in any way, in any shape or form, are something I can't just can't deal with. Um, otherwise, I'm I'm pretty open to really shitty bios as long as they mention the W's, what, where, who, uh, when, and maybe what can I do? Like what can, what can I even do for you? It's if you say, hey, name's Pete, I'm from Huntley, and here uh, is a link to my song. I'll, I make hip hop, then I'm like, cool, these are all things I'm happy that I need to know, and that's really, really basic, and I'll probably click that link to check out your song. If you give me an A4 page worth of, in 1984 I was born in Hamilton, moved to Huntley, stayed there, and I'm like, oh my god, <laughs> what do you mean, like, that's all irrelevant, and then you attach um, um, three photos that are all five megabytes and a WAV file, I'm not even going to look, probably look at that. And I'm so sorry, but I get like hundreds of emails and there's nothing I can, you know, if, if there's no, if I have to ha go hard to extract inf the info I need, which really is your name, maybe past projects, where you're from, genre, and please find your genre. And I know it's so hard and no one likes being put in a drawer, but think about it. You know, it makes it so much easier for anyone receiving your email um, to, to find, in, find out if you fit in in that week, you know, I always go, man, I would really love to feature more R&B soul. I don't get tons of messages. Um, um, if, if your message says it's R&B soul, I'm usually like, ching, yes, <laughs> this is so great. This is exactly what I was looking for this week. So just mention it, you know. Um, yeah, so, and um, I guess um, um, most things have been mentioned in term, terms of bios, um, what Lorraine said about different lengths of bios. If you give me a super short two-line bio that just mention, mentions the bare basics, I'm already pretty happy. And then if I want to, I go, this is actually quite interesting and fills one of my slots this week, I'll probably say, hey, can you tell me a little more about yourself? And it would be incredibly handy if you then don't have to panic, get a heart attack and write a fancy bio for me. Uh, if you just had it there, and you can just, you know, draw onto that. And um, talking about photos, usually, I mean, we are still a print magazine, and I do um, often, for print, obviously have to request print-sized uh, pictures in high resolution. Find out, just, you know, uh, maybe do some research into what does high resolution mean? What does web resolution, screen resolution mean? What do these things mean, and what is required here? And don't just send photos, maybe just send a folder with photos, a link to a Dropbox saying help yourself to the photos, various sizes here. Mm -hmm. um, that that's makes it much easier. I think as an artist, um, as Lorraine said, you have to think about who, are, who, you are, you're who I, am I sending things to and what do they need to do with it? And um, how can I make it easy? Because if you imagine you get 120 emails a day, all kind of wanting the same thing, all like, and I, honestly, the quality of music is usually really high. There are very few awful songs um, that I get sent. So I, I not only do I have to respond to the emails, I have to listen to them. And if you want to stand out here, um, make it really easy for me. You know, don't, don't stumble at send you a way huge file, send you a PDF. 
I mean, I can't even copy really out of a PDF. PDFs are a huge pain for me. Um, why would you not put the what you want to say in the body of an email so it's right there? And I don't have to click onto a Dropbox, click onto a PDF file, which annoys me, download maybe the PDF file, um, and, and then have five megabytes on my computer that I'll never get rid of unless I spend ages in admin. Um, just make it really easy. Make a link. Click. Easy to look. Here's my bio. Click. Or put the bio right in there, but give me assets, asset folders. Links to your social media helps me immensely. I will stalk you. <laughs> it's like, let's be fair. I will look at your Spotify numbers, and I will check out if there's a band camp, which is still my preferred platform to embed things on because people can buy stuff. I, I will stalk you hard. So make it easy. If I have to, if you say, please playlist my song, and I have to find you on Spotify to playlist your song, then it's already like, you could have just given me the link, please. Please, I do this 100 times a day. <laughs> so, yeah, so just maybe if you take away anything at all from what I'm saying is do email me either way. You can keep it short. Just give me the info I need and the link, and we're cool. I'll probably tell you what I need. If, if I'm interested, I'll respond and I'll say something to, to help you because I want to help you. I really hate having to say no 95% of the time. Um, I want to help you. Um, and what was the other thing that I lost while I went into attention? Uh, thank you. Uh, sorry, I forgot what I... There was one more thing I wanted to say, but I forgot. <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure it will come up. Come, to, come talk to me after. Say hi um, and, and um, ask stuff. I can... So, my many years of working in uh, the industry, it's all about workflow. It's all about kind of figuring out the workflow of the people you're trying to engage with and, and, and connect with and how you can make literally their job easier. Yep. And so, um, and, and, uh, I hear what you're saying, particularly around, uh, I guess, there is this um, feeling that of put, you know, the looking professional and, and wanting to put their best foot forward. Uh, so sending you the highest quality uh, version of the song um, and putting it into a PDF that's you know, really well uh, groomed and, um, and graphic designed so that it gives that first impression. Um, but the reality is uh, making it easy to extract the biog out of it, um, a, a nice easy place to get the photos, nice easy uh, way of recognizing what genre you're in, so you can figure out what um, what that's going. The same could be said for festivals as well, I suppose. And 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 or is there a difference? And uh, I guess I'll come back to you, Paula. Um, in terms of approaching festivals, um, what type of stuff you know are you going to put together for for a festival um, so that it makes their workflow easier and, and easier to pick one of your artists? Yeah, I mean, I think the, the key thing to always remember, and, and Lorraine really summed it up well, is that. Your, what you send out will need to be adapted to the audience, to the person you're, you know, you're pitching yourself to at all times. Um, and I think, so the important thing is to have everything at your fingertips. And I mean, what I do is, is I keep a, a list of achievements. Like, otherwise I would just lose track of everything. So for every artist I have, and you should do this for yourselves if you don't already, is always just keep a running list of everything Otherwise, you'll be scouring through, when did I get into the charts or when did this happen? Um, so that you've got it at hand, right? And then what you're going to do is work out what, if you even need that information, what what of, what of that list are you going to include in perhaps updating that little bio that is there at all times? It just sums you up, but you can adapt it really easily and quickly. Um, so, so just keep that in mind. And I think with... Yeah, do your research. I mean, that's the other thing. I think a lot of people probably just think, oh, you know, I'll just send it to uh, a festival and uh, hope that these guys all like what I'm doing. Um, well, you know, definitely do your research. Who, what's, what are the lineups from the last five years? Is your music suited to that? Um, you know, that type of thing. Same with media. You know, you're not, if you make pop music, you're not going to be pitching yourself to the rock, um, same sort of thing, right? Um, so really do do your research. And I think that's that the onus is on you to, to make to do that before you even send that email. Um, and then with festivals, yeah, I mean obviously what festivals are looking for is they want to know that you are a great live performer. Um, they want to see footage of you performing live. Um, and I know, again, that's really hard if you're just starting out and you haven't even had that opportunity. I mean, how do you get the opportunity to even do it? But 
um, you know, I, I work with artists who don't have a lot of, um, or if any, footage, but um, they'll they'll come up with some kind of way to do it. And again, um, it could just be a live, you know, you singing live. Sometimes it's just you on your iPhone. And I've, I've sent stuff like that to, to bookers and they've loved it. But yeah, so you want live footage. That really does help. You do want to, um, I guess, um, with festivals, they do want to know what you've got built around um, the fact, you know, if I'm pitching an artist now for Rhythm and Vines in uh, December, what else is the artist, what has the artist got coming up between now and then? Because they're taking a punt if they book them now, aren't they? I mean, if nothing happens between now and December, they've got not, you know, and they've got you on the lineup, there's not much happening. Um, so you want to tell them what, what have you got coming up? So that might include like a bit of a, a rundown on, you know, I've got these singles coming up, I've got an album coming up. Um, Festival bookers will ask to hear the music that's not released. So again, going back to what we we're talking about before, send them um, a streaming link because they're probably not going to want to download a massive file, or they probably don't want to hear like a really rough mi mix either, you know, or something <laughs> like that you're not overly happy with. So just be really mindful that you're putting your best foot forward. Um, so yeah, they want to hear the music. They want to uh, know that you can. Um, uh, perform so they want to see the footage. Um, they probably do want a bio, but again, you're not going to send a bio full of, you know, like a flowery bio, a bio with creative language about, I uh, know, your history um, as a child. Probably, you're going to really try and focus in on the fact that, you know, what you're doing and what's going to happen. I feel so. Um, yeah, and and the same. It's with the same with the media. You know, like if you're sending out um, a bio, all of this information. Um, in whatever shape or format to media, um, if it's around a release, they, they don't put that at the bottom of the bio. They want to know right at the top what you're doing. And um, so just, yeah, keep in mind, I think, at all times who, that, who your information and who your pitch is going to and tailor it to that um, person or audience, yeah. Do, do you find, um, Thea, do you find that... Uh Festivals or anyone that you're engaging with might like to leverage off your influence in terms of what you're doing on on, uh, on online and in social media. I mean, you've you've got a presence, and so oh yeah, like I have um I have festivals um contact me directly from Instagram if that's what you mean. Um, and I really love that. Um, in the same way, sometimes I reach out to people via Instagram as well, and I feel like um. Uh, the reason why that works is because you can see everything I'm doing on my Instagram. Like I kind of have, it's it's not, um, it's kind of a mix of um, really cute, cool pics of whatever I'm doing mixed with um, like achievements. And um, uh, so it's kind of like a perfect visual bio, if you will. And so I feel like it just makes it really obvious. Um, there's like live, I always put, you know, cause I'm really proud of it and work really hard on it. I always put really cool clips, um, even if they're just kind of rough because they look dope anyways, on my socials of me performing. So like you should be able to see if you come on my socials, whether it's for Tikahu, which is a holy Waiata Reo Māori project, or whether it's Thea, which is more alt experimental. Um, yeah, you should be able to look on there and see, you know, screenshots of cool articles or maybe magazine things, really cute, just random shoots that I make with my mates, um, clips from live performances, pretty much just like almost like a perfect, like hypothetically, like, a, you know, if I was like a model, it would be like a model portfolio, you know? So I think um, the utilising of socials in that way is really cool because it kind of can be this perfect balance of, you know, how like, um, I mean, I don't, I don't write my bios or anything I'm not really remotely interested in that I'd rather make music so that's why I've got amazing pay to do that but I'm just saying like obviously this is all very like you know the more formal stuff and then I feel like what that's what my strength is and I'm able to portray on my socials is you know kind of show myself my personality but also a little bit of like a CV of what's happening and then therefore it makes it way more uh approachable for you know, promoters or bookers or even like, you know, um, magazines, blogs, everyone, they just get in my DMs and will, you know, ask if I want to do something. And then normally from there, I will um, respond like personally and in my own way, which is, you know, like warm and cute, but then I'll refer 
onto Paula from there. So it's kind of a really cool, refreshing way of doing things where it gives that kind of firsthand um, contact where people feel like, oh, well, like this this girl is like really personable and this is really cute. I feel like I'm able to approach her and stuff, but then I'm not going to like do the whole thing myself. I'm going to refer on to um, P who can then give um, all of the more technical things that they need, such as usually it's like bios, footage, photos. So yeah, for sure. Socials are honestly amazing and I'm very much passionate about them. Yeah, I I would also just add that nine times out of 10 uh, requests for let's just say Takao because it's the current music you're working on, will come via um, having someone seen a video of Takao singing on um, Instagram or TikTok. Um, so that's where it starts. And I think that's interesting too to know that, yeah, there is a formal way, a formal approach that has to be gone through. Um, not everyone has the is lucky enough to have a manager or a team of people that are doing this, and I fully understand that. So... Um, what's what's good for you to know is that people are watching your socials and they do come via those things. Um, you know, even just... And, and again, you know, not everyone's... You might have done it like an RNZ live session, let's say. Not everyone has seen that. Or you might do something for, I don't know, stuff or BFM or... But not everyone sees it there. So your social media is really your way of... of, of Um, letting people know what you have done in a way that you feel comfortable with. I know not everyone loves social media, but um, where you can embrace it and where you can be yourself and, you know, just do it, um, it really does pay off. Because like I say, I would say most of the bookings for Tekahu all come through having seen some form of live music, her singing somewhere, yep. And also, oh, sorry. Oh, I'm so sorry, Fire. Um, it means the other thing is that, of course, um, even though they're, that content is sitting on formal platforms, for example, I've done um, Te Kahu amazing live sessions with RNZ. It's sitting on those platforms, but we've just kind of um, screen shared or whatever, put them on Instagram. Then that means other people can share them, which is really cool in a more kind of organic way in their stories. And therefore, um, it can just reach so many more people, which is really refreshing. And then they can come to you. Et the fire. Kia ora. Sorry, I took... I took notes all over the place there, so I might jump about. But, you know, I think, can we just take it back a little bit and do the reality check? Um, There are 60,000 songs going up every 24 hours on Spotify. There are hundreds of artists in New Zealand trying to get radio play or uh, coverage or get a support slot or be on a festival bill. Um, You are competing against the world. You know, every radio station has a choice of dozens and dozens of songs every week. So your bar has to be set so very, very high. And I think most of us will have experienced um, when the bar wasn't high with things that came to us. Um, You know, I wondered if you'd like to manage me. Um, Here's a little bit of footage. It's not very good, but it gives you an idea. Um, pass, really. And I think the problem is that if you go too soon and you try too early, um, judgments are made. I mean, I defy anyone in this room as an artist to say that they don't make judgments when they hear a track, when they see a video, when they read an interview. God, I hate some actors. You know, I don't even know them and I hate them. Um... (laughs) Um, you know, every time we see or hear something. You know, I think women are nailing social media imagery. Um, Thea, Benny, there's something bold about what they're doing. And maybe it's that fashion angle that's so much more approachable than for the boys. Um, And I think sometimes men try to hide in this humbleness a little bit. So so I'm really going way in circles um, on things on this. But if your bar is not high, you're not competing. I'd rather you didn't do it at all. But when you are ready, you set your bar so very, very high. You don't have to have the money that Sony and... LA has to do a photo session. You don't have to have the $250,000 Lenny Kravitz budget. But if you do it brilliantly and with thought and with time and patience and consideration, and I know that artists don't even know the word patience, 
you've spent all this time crafting songs and being in a studio and making sure everything's right. And you come out the door and it's like, oh, I want to release this. Well, that's where you've got to step back. You've got to take the time. You've got to make it worthwhile. You've got to ensure that it isn't released on Friday and it's over on Saturday. You've got to make sure that the eyes are on it, that when the IMNZ or the MMF do their newsletters every week, which is giving you an opportunity to tell people what's happening, that it isn't on Friday, Joe Bloggs releases his single. Um, if they all look like that, I know it already. I've just read what I want to read. I'm not going to the next paragraph. I'm not going to look at what's under that. So just try to be... Um, heartfelt. Uh, you have to give the facts, of course you do. I'm, I'm, you know, everybody has a different way of working. We'll, we'll all work differently. Everybody in the room needs their own plan, their own way of doing it, their own personality, their own authenticity. But um, my way is, you know, I'm, I'm an ex-journalist and how do I get from the heading to the first paragraph, to the second paragraph, to engage someone, to make them read more. Um, and I think the facts are the second paragraph. I don't believe the facts are the first paragraph. I think there has to be something that hooks me in and makes me feel there's something different about this artist. Um, I mean, I have some examples from my own, but maybe we'll leave that to the end. Um, well, we've got, um, uh, we've got two minutes left, and I do want to leave it open at five minutes towards the end, so okay. by, by all means. Um, okay, so just getting back to that thing about my own artist, and apologies, but it's what I live. Um, oh, I'll give you one that isn't. So James Blunt runs the greatest Twitter account ever. Um, well, maybe after iced tea, because I, I have a heart for him. Um, but James Blunt has a little strap line on his Instagram, I think, where it says, proof that one song is all you need. Um, his self-deprecation really works, but I'm not sure that New Zealanders are so good at their self-deprecation. So really be careful about um, not being taken seriously. Uh, you know, that they can go two ways. And again, that's why you have to stop and think, who am I talking to and how do I sound? And if I was reading this, what would I think about me? Um, you know, if Paula was scrolling through Facebook and she comes across my post, what, is she, what judgment is she making about my post? And we do it. I, I defy you. Um, Tom Scott... Uh, no one can tell Tom Scott what to do. So, you know, I'm a, it's a different sort of management arrangement, Tom Scott and I. Um, I look up to him. I think he's a genius. Um, and Tom has a line that is irrelevant jazz from an island off the coast of Antarctica. And to me, that is the greatest self-deprecation because we know that it's never irrelevant um, and that he just hasn't the heart to say, wow, my new album's fantastic. Um, so there's ways you can do it, but you have to think what is right and what is the message and how is it conveyed and am I getting respect and am I making people want to know more? Um, Aidan Fine, we've just, been, we've just been working on Aidan's toolkit. This is Aidan Fine and my anniversary, actually, a one-year anniversary. We were at the summit a year ago, um, he introduced himself and I said, oh my God, Aidan, I've been watching all your stuff through lockdown. I love your videos. I love how you capture it in one minute 30. And we started to talk and eventually um, that was it. But we've just been putting stuff together and I have to say that I haven't sent a bio guide to anyone. I've spoken from the heart when I've talked to them about his song. You know, I've been a fan um, for the last two years, now I'm working with them, this is why, can you give it a listen? And I think that that's persuasive enough without being um, too pushy. But I said to, you know, I said to Aidan, can you write some stuff so that we can do the biog? And he found it an incredible struggle because it's very, very hard for artists to talk about themselves. So we asked just for some facts, just tell us some stuff. And the opening of Aidan's biog is now, my mother used to plead with me to land the plane when I rambled in an elaborate story. 
I've always loved being a storyteller and I've always thought there was more to say. And he goes on to talk then about his music, but he ends it by saying, um, after all these years, I'm still, still trying to figure out what the inside of my head sounds like. And I just think that's a brilliant ending sentence. And I think that's what you need to do, you know, take yourself back to school and write your story about yourself and then cull it and whittle it down and find that little essence of who you are and how other people might want to know who you are. But Thanks, Lauren. Th there's a difference, I think, also in um, those types of bios, which are great, which you can put on your Spotify, right? That, that often the artists can write themselves or like the ones you've just um, read, Lorraine, which works so well on, yeah, just short little snippets about you. Um, they're going to be really different than what you might have to formulate for uh, whatever else, for festival or whatever. So I think that's the other thing which I always recommend to anyone and a lot of the, the mentoring I do as well is that you're going to have different, if you can, I mean, and if you can't, we get that as well, but where you can, you, there is a difference between bio, bios and what you need them for. And, you know, um, I manage Paige. Paige doesn't have the formal bio that Sony has on her Spotify page or on her YouTube or whatever. She would, that would, doesn't sum her up at all. Um, she does her own thing and, and so does um, Thea. Um, they just, um, neither of them want to write a bio about themselves. Um, and I think actually your Spotify at the moment, Thea, is probably just reviews because we haven't got around to trying to do anything at the moment. She's got no new music out, so it kind of feels like, well, what are we going to say or do right now? She's got other focus. So I think just to give yourself that... Um, sense of knowing that yeah you there are you know you can you can have some creative freedom um people do want to see who you are um but they are very different than something quite formal which other people might write for you or formulate for you or whatever but we need then the press release yes the press release as well which yeah as yeah. probably you lorraine will also and actually zilka as well all having worked in journalism um you know, whenever I write a press release, I'm like, what would I have asked this person as a journalist? Um, I try and, you know, direct as much. Because, you know, an artist will say, what, am I gonna, what are they going to ask me? And I'm like, well, hopefully if the press release is written really well and they've done their <laughs> research, they'll ask exactly what's in that press yeah. release. So that's kind of my goal anyway. Yeah, so, um, and so Zilka, with, I guess, uh, with New Zealand Musician, you're, it's not just the editorial that you're writing, but then there's, um, and Lorraine, you touched on it, how do you... Um, create something for somebody like Sir Dave Dobbin and, um, and keep it fresh and what, what it is that you're, um, you know, because his record is so extensive. And, mm. um, and so for you, Silke, you're uh, looking for new angles and, um, and for different ways to perhaps uh, talk about an artist that you may have talked about before or, um, I mean, around the new artists and uh, when the, the construction of a bio versus a press release. Like, what do you, what works well? Uh, when it's coming towards you? Well, um, I'm usually all about the facts. Um, I appreciate a good press release, but um, in the end, for me, it's mostly still the music that counts. Right. Yeah. Um, so I will look for, I will scan for facts, probably not even read everything properly because I probably don't have the time for that, to be fr quite honest. There's a lot of emails. Um, scan for facts, listen to the music, and that's what I go for. So really, with everything that's been said, um, kind of got to lighten it up a little bit and be, be honest and say I don't always read every single thing you say. That's fine. I think that's the reality yeah, of the fine. workflow that, you know, as busy people who are ingesting hundreds and hundreds of press releases, bios, photos, what stands out. And, uh, and uh, as Lorraine was saying, you've got that hook in that first paragraph, which helps to kind of keep you reading or keep you engaged. If there's enough in there that allows uh, the, the the person that you're targeting, um, with with the um, with the EPK or whatever it is you're sending mm -hmm. out, to help them latch onto it, even if it's um, uh, just something that just is a bit of a mind worm, and they they store it and then they go, oh, who was that yeah. act that's well, that's right. I like searching my inbox um, in hindsight. Like I listen to the songs and then I go, actually, this song is amazing get stuck on it, and then I go back and read the email properly 
once the, I find the song is amazing. Um, so if you send me PDFs, I probably will not read it and I can't search for it in my inbox either. So um, make it easy, um, you know, put it in, uh, in, into the body of the email and uh, services like MailChimp, MailJet, um, Moosend is what we use. They all have free tiers. Set yourself up as part of your research, set yourself up one of those mailing list accounts and set it up with a bio that you can send out to people. It's free and you can store your email addresses there and everything. It's great. You can see if people opened it, if they clicked it. Excellent. Yeah. Okay. I just also, uh, just something else that you mentioned, which is uh, the Music Managers Forum of Aotearoa. Hands up if you're a member. Excellent. Could, could use a few more hands, but I'm just going to just say that uh, with the MMF, uh, they have the festival bookers networking, um, speed networking sessions. We just, just completed one of those. Uh, that's a great place to, um, to, get, your, to pit, get your pitch nice and tight. Um, and get your toolkits all set and, um, as a way of testing that. And also with the MMF, testing it with some of the other, um, during some of the networking events, testing that stuff with other managers uh, that might be around the same level. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to open the floor for questions. We've got five minutes before we have to wrap this up. But um, any questions out there? Go ahead, sir. Great question. So 20% effort for 80% of the results. What's the 20%? Oh, foc as an artist, you should focus on your music first and foremost and make that as banging as you can. And the rest will come, hopefully, somehow. Um, also, be everywhere. Um, I think uh, younger people are not so fond of um, Facebook. Um, don't neglect it. We're not all young. So Dave have a TikTok? His music's available for you to do your own TikTok. Just checking. Yeah. Okay, I will address that with Sir Dave, actually. He, <laughs> he needs to be everywhere. Mm -hmm. Okay. More questions? Come on, don't be shy. It's hard. Patience. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I mean, I really do see it every day. I, I think it's just trying to convey why I say patience, why I say focus. And I think um, a creative mind is, is very forward moving, doesn't like to stand still for too long and think about what they've just done. They're already on to the next thing. And I think it's that holding the reins a little bit and pulling it all back and making sure that you're making the best use of everything you're doing to build up the bigger picture. And that is really hard. And, and you know, someone like Tom Scott, you know, he would be on album 45 if he could. Um, but we've just got to look at Avondale number two. So you have to, if you don't have a manager you, or a team around you, that's your own self-control that has to come into this. You, you really have to sit and think, I've done everything I can for this, now let me do it properly. And if that means holding yourself to account, you're going to have to do it. Mm. Does that help? Yeah. Chill out. Yeah. Oh, not too chill out, though. You've got to be sharp. <laughs> Yeah. I think we've got time for one more. Yes, oh, at the back there. Oh, thanks. Um, just a question about email pitching, because there's been a few different things said. If you're sending links, um, what's worked or what hasn't worked or what works for you in terms of getting noticed? Because if, if you send an email pitch with links and you can't be sure that they're going to be interested enough <laughs> to click in and go and have a look, what would your advice be um, in how to get noticed at that point? Well, if, uh, assuming it's directed at me. Um, uh, anybody. <laughs> um, I, I think a friendly email goes a long way. Like if you just ask nicely, I will probably listen, uh, click on your link. Um, I will probably, for songs for me, for example, if you want me to click it, make it a SoundCloud 
because you can hide sound clouds to the world, but you can still send me a link that I can hear. Um, even on my phone, if I'm sitting at the bus stop and somebody sends an email and there's a SoundCloud link, I can click that and can listen to it at really great quality over my headphones on my phone. And so can our contributors. Um, SoundCloud is really fabulous like that and for free as a tool to hide your music on. So um, if you want me to click something, that's probably going to be it. If I have to click a Dropbox and have to click through various folders to find it, uh, I would probably click once and then go, it's not even there. <laughs> and, and that's it. But So make it really straightforward. And um, you can find out from most platforms what sort of requirements they've got. Some radio stations will prefer having a WAV file somewhere in a drop bo Dropbox so they don't have to convert your MP3 into a WAV file for their system. Yeah. You know? um, so ask. Ask, what, how do you prefer to get your music? And I'm, th I'm pretty sure people from other publications will, will also be very happy to tell you. What works? Um, I think I think just that remembrance that you are competing against everyone else that's doing it, and you know the shorter, the sweeter simplicity was a word that Polly used earlier on. Um, if if Silka has fifty emails sitting waiting to be opened, uh, why is it? Why is it yours? That that is your that is your job. She opens it. How much of a journey, how down a rabbit hole does she have to go? Or is the essence captured on that cover email and then everything else is attached and she can explore it if she wants to go a step further? How important is a good subject line? Oh, it's hard. Oh, it, it really helps because I have to, I get a lot of emails. I have to search for stuff. And if I type in sort of keywords and I get 50 emails um, coming up under that, under that term, then I really kind of want to see, want to find yours via the subject line. So don't call it new song because <laughs> great. <laughs> oh, <Yeah>. that email. <laughs> no, I used to do courses at Unitech around file naming conventions <laughs> and how important it was around... Uh, in particularly subject lines. I know my email <laughs> inbox is a catastrophe um, and trying to find stuff. Um, I, um, I just want to also quickly check with you, uh, get a temperature for things like the link trees that are coming out now. What, how do you guys feel about those in terms so of... So great. Yeah? Yeah. Um, uh, you got me onto Linktree, by the way, and I've got in every um, social... Me like on my Instagram, I have um, just as the... In the website section, it's literally a link tree for Princess Thea, and you can find literally everything on there, right? And I think yeah, that's I think, really I think cool. Link trees are really helpful. Um, just one quick shout out for um, uh, Disco, just really quickly. Sorry, no, and uh, shout out Tim Byrne, who's the brains behind Disco. But that for us as a company um, has been life changing, and I know that it's not necessarily something that's accessible for everyone. I mean, you can do a trial, you can go home and try it, but. Um, it's just, it's been a game changer for us. It's this um, essentially a, a system that stores everything, and it's perfect for music. I think every major music company in the world uses it now. Um, we we just it's like a, a playlists, and you have all your music on there. You can pick and choose what you want to put into a playlist depending on who you're going to send it to. You can have your bio in there. You can have all your music in there. You can have all your photos in there. You can have videos in there. Um, it goes on and on, um, and you can literally tailor every single um, link you make to whoever you're sending it to. Um, if you are going to download, um, if you upload a WAV file and you're going to download it and you want an MP3 but you don't have an MP3, the person you're sending it to can download it in various formats. It is honestly game changing um, and that is what we use now and when we work with PR clients or if I had to send, you know, I wanted my artist to um, upload something for me, we just send them a link and say please upload all your stuff to this one file and it's there and we don't have, it's all in one space. It is honestly... And what was the name of the again? Disco. Disco. But yeah, not suited for everyone maybe, but I'm just saying it's for, for us, it's what we use now. Okay, see so we're warming up now. We're heating up and then Nicola, uh, are we kind of hit our time slot? Where's she gone? Yeah. yeah, okay, cool. Um, sorry, folks. Look, uh, we, we'll be mulling around here, so um, and uh, you'll be able to talk uh, to, um, to the panellists, but I'd like you to please give a round of applause, please, for, uh, for the panellists.